Tonight on Bachelor Party, Tasha she finally picked someone. Let's talk about how she got here. Who went home? Some very bizarre omissions from this episode. Some confusion I had. And of course, there was Neil Lane. Let's get into it. Let's batch. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other... Well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. Welcome to Bachelor Party. We're on a mountaintop. We did it. It's the end of the season. I am joined by Nora Princiati. Nora, hello. Hello, Juliet. I'm so happy to be here. This is going to be cathartic. I can already tell. <laughs> you know, it's not quite a mountaintop. It's more like a plateau or like a hiking shelf on the grounds of La Quinta, wherever they had their proposal. It was like a mesa. I don't know. I'm just thinking of all of the language I learned in third grade. Um, all the geography language. I feel like we've come on a really, really long journey. I am honestly relieved a little bit sad, but not that sad because match season starts so soon. But like, I just, I'm feeling some sort of way at the conclusion of Clacia's season. How are you feeling? Yeah, well, I, I, I feel both, um, like I really enjoyed this season, although I will, I don't know if it's just like a shiny new object. I went, when I saw the teaser for Matt season, I went full, like, Christine Baranski in Mamma Mia 2 <laughs> have him washed and brought to my room. Like I was immediately very ready hot. to go for what's next, which I don't think is an indictment of what we just watched, but no. I just bring on, bring on more drama. Like there's always a back That's and forth really with the finales where like you just get a clean resolution and I don't know. Um, love is love. Love is love. <laughs> love has won here on, on this season. It's funny. Like, I'm really excited about Matt. I just feel like it's been a long journey for some reason. I don't even know why. Because the funny thing is, we've just been to La Quinta the whole goddamn time. We have truly not really gone anywhere. We are back where we started and also where we have been this entire time. Yeah. One thing that really struck me about this episode was how good Tasha is at riding that scooter. I know. In high Ben's, heels. Like, Ben's like always trying to like knock her off of it. He's like trying to play like horseplay. And just like, not the time, Ben. If you have to be wearing a helmet, maybe take it a little easy. But truly, that is that is how far we have traveled. We have traveled only as far as our scooters scooter can take us. <laughs> it's kind of like the Truman Show. I'm not sure why I haven't been referencing that more the whole way. Um, it was a really, really, really weird finale. It was much more... Um, it was more like the typical finale, which we haven't really had in a while because um, Peter and Colton and Becca and Ari... And Hannah B all had untraditional, unsuccessful relationships, kind of. I mean, Colton, I guess, ended up with her. It just was like, it's been a while since she made a pick. He picked her back. They got engaged and they're excited. It's like, we haven't really seen that in a while. It felt like a little bit of a letdown as a result, but it also felt like the right, the right pick, right? Yeah, I, it's, she's clearly crazy about him. He's clearly crazy about her. Now they get to test that against Good luck. This thing we call reality. <laughs> but when they were doing the whole like one, she, you know, he's talking about, I will choose you every day. And she's like crying. And I feel like Tasha's whole vibe has been so headstrong, independent. It was actually kind of nice. Like I, I'm a messy bitch who lives for drama. Like the <laughs> finales are not totally my, my jam. I'm like, I'm happy for you. Whatever. Like start throwing beers at each other. Peaks um, with hometowns. For sure. Or for yes, totally. Yeah. But I did find myself going a little bit like, what a couple of hams. They're just really psyched about this. Yeah. I meant to say this a few minutes ago. 
I'm an easy mark right now. I like really just like seeing people happy is just like makes me so happy. Yesterday, I watched the full 22 minutes of John Krasinski, Some Good News. And I was just like sobbing. I was just like, this is so nice. There's so many lovely people in this world. I just want everyone to be happy and feel taken care of and and comforted. Like there's a future among these uncertain times. And like, similarly, I, I think like you were saying you were excited to see Matt. Like there's also like for... A, a good time there's sort of, or like a pleasing thing. There's like, it's like 20% better than it would have been because you're so deprived of like happiness, social interaction and like vibes right now. So like, there's just a lot like playing into this. And similarly with Tasha and Zach, I was just like, that's nice that this couple found each other, but I was like pretty touched by it. I was like these two people who've just been scarred in their various ways, seemingly so excited to now live in a fake New York in a fake cardboard taxi it's just like really sweet. And it, it really got me. I'm, I'm getting soft in my COVID old age. No, I think that's super valid though, especially because for who Zach is and what his arc has been on the show, there's been so much of Tasha questioning, is there going to be something that comes up? There's always something that comes up with you. He has all of these very real struggles in his past. And you can look at that with a little bit of a cynical lens, I guess, and wonder, holy crap, like, this person's been through some real stuff. What happens when you take off the reality television gauze? Like, will this be the same relationship? But I did start to feel like, and I, it didn't hit me until really the finale. Um, he's really happy to just be enjoying <laughs> what's going on in his life. And I, for I someone know. who's overcome a lot, that freaking rules. I like, know, it's really If sweet. you're Zach and you've been through some dark stuff and you're just like, you know what? I'm having this cool experience that not a lot of people get to have. And there's this like beautiful, incredible woman who I'm super into and she wants to marry me. And maybe we're going to go make babies and maybe we're not. We'll see. But right now I really feel like we're going to like, I, I, I'm with you and I'm laughing a little bit as you're talking about how we have pandemic brain and, and maybe are altering our standards might be the wrong word, but just opinions of what we're watching because of that, because there was an iconic, just like the most slate article of all time was about how Taylor Swift, one of my favorite humans, mm -hmm. um, became famous because all of our expectations were lowered because of the <laughs> great recession. <laughs> and I just can't wait for whatever like pop culture take comes out of this of like, we don't, we don't have high enough expectations anymore because we just went through this horrible year. So we're just willing to accept anything on television. But I, I don't think it, it was, it was a nice change of pace to see them end up together and have a clean ending and, and have it be happy. Even though I do tend to prefer the more dramatic. Finishes. Of course. And we all want a fence jump, right? I mean, and the, the split screen of Ari dumping Becca, while ethically um, unsound was really compelling television. Incredible. But, this, but this is, this is nice. I suppose it's just, so, it's so funny. This will just all, yeah. I mean, this is obviously going to be the pandemic season and um, next week on the pod, I talked to Rob Mills about, uh, you know, just sort of like other ramifications of this being the pandemic season, but like, yeah, everything like your standards are lower and the good things are like that much better and the sweet things are that much sweeter and the joyous things that much more joyous because of our low standards. And that's okay. Maybe that's the way it should be. We should be feeling more joy. Well, in the promo, when Matt pulled up in the red Porsche, I was like, what? The James like, they, Bond they were, thing is kind of crazy. But it it was just so aesthetically jarring after being at the La Quinta for however long we just were. Never I was Colin like, Whoa. looks much grander. Much, much yes. grander. I'm it excited. Seemed to be. I can't wait to meet. Can't wait to like meet Matt. I'm so excited. Before that, let's get into the episode. We're gonna go mostly in order. I mostly have the the title of my outline for this is confusing finale because until the end, we're like this is nice. There's just like a lot of confusion and weird stuff. And we must begin with the goodbye to Ivan. Um, if Ivan is not in pole position to be bachelor, regardless of the fact that there's gonna be another whole bachelorette cycle before that. I will just be shocked and angry. I love Ivan. He's got the total package and his exit is so confusing. First of all, as discussed yesterday, the Airstream remains to be absolutely outrageous and he got the worst date. And then it seems like Ivan and Tasha had some like really meaningful conversation about the role religion plays in their life. And Tasha breaks up with it. When Tasha does not give him a rose, we'll come back to Ben in a minute, by the way. 
but Ivan's more important. Um, when Tasha does not give him a rose, she says it's because of their conversation about religion and how they're not really on the same page there. And he's like, yeah, I agree. What the fuck? Show us this conversation. It made absolutely no sense. There was no precursor to it except for after Fantasy Suites, when after they were came out of that dumb airstream. Um, by the way, when he was like, oh, the master bedroom, I died <laughs> laughing. It was so funny. Um, because he's also tall. Like yeah. that cannot be comfortable so tall. for him. That- the thing about Ivan not winning is that I mean, I don't know. Like if I if I had a, like less dignity. And it was a little bit younger. I would definitely try to like slide into Ivan's DMs. He's going to be fine. I, I hope he finds love soon. Okay. I'm taking that as like approval. Yeah, like, go I'm, for it. <laughs> I want, I, I want Ivan to be the bachelor, but I also like Ivan, I will ruin my life for you. Like <laughs> anything like the Martin Shkreli lady, like I will go that far. This is a perfect man. He's perfect. He's so hot. He's tall. He plays tennis. He plays chess. Gainfully employed, seemingly smart, lovely He's family, aerospace great uncle. engineer. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. so cool. Like, I don't know when, I don't know. I, I think there's like a, a time as you mature when all of a sudden like engineering becomes very hot. It's like very there's something hot, about yes. tinkering where it's like, wow, <laughs> you know how to do that. That's so cool. Ivan, hello. Um, Ivan, hello. Anyway. This is the podcast for you. <laughs> uh, the thing that was so crazy about it was one, Tasha had a moment after the Airstream, where she was speaking about their conversation about religion very positively, I thought. I thought she said this was a chance for Ivan and I to, to talk about some real things. And one of them was like how important religion is to both of us. And that can be editing. I guess maybe she could have gone on to say, we feel very differently about it, but it's important to both of us and, and something that would imply conflict or difference. But I thought that was displayed as something that was a connection between the two Same. of them. And then all of a sudden it's this thing that blows it up. And the other thing was that Ivan's whole sense of confidence was based on feeling like they were the most compatible. They were the ones that would have the most, like you could visualize the whole yeah. life that they could they spend together. together. And I felt like that was very true. Like more so than Zach, I was like, I totally get what you guys would be doing day in and day out for however long. And maybe that's a little bit colored by the fact that I would rather do those things than what I picture <laughs> Tish yes. and Zach doing. I too Again, would rather Ivan. live life with Ivan than Zach. I agree. I mean, there's no, there's no question. I mean, my, my, the four goes for me very clearly. Ivan, Brendan, huge drop off, Zach fallen off a cliff into a crater, into the center of the earth. Ben, like there's just no question. Unless you're know. Mallory Rubin. Mallory loves Mallory really loves Zach though. Mal and, and Zach seems like a great guy. It seems like a good connection. Here's my thing though. Ivan being so so sure. I don't know if this is the edit or or whatnot, but Tasha's chemistry with Zach was just very apparent for many weeks now. Like it just she clearly had a playfulness and just like a, a like a chemistry, a sexual chemistry with him that she didn't have with anyone else. That was just very, very evident to me. Um but Ivan obviously felt something. I don't know. That was just super weird. And also this is one of the great things about the season has been the serious conversations. And if anyone can have a serious conversation and like do the world a service, it's Ivan. We've already seen that this season. And so like, why didn't we get to see that? The The only thing I can think of is that it happened in a fantasy suite in the infamous Airstream. And so it wasn't on camera. And so there's no tape to, to use. But that said... I just want to make it clear. I'm pretty positive after just discussion with many people that uh, I am completely positive that the, the overnight dates were not boom, boom, boom. There was a day off in between. So it went, it was not three days in a row. Thank God. And, um, the day after Ivan's date, he would have, and, and Tisha, they both would have talked to the producers about this conversation if it was such a big deal. So like, it doesn't make any sense. No, it makes absolutely. It, I, I, I do not understand it. Really, especially because you would think that that type of thing would come up when they met their families too, or with yeah. Ivan's family. Yeah, it absolutely. Seemed I, incredibly out of left field. It also seemed like it, it did feel a little bit like an excuse to break up with him. Yes, 100%. like I don't doubt that Tasha feels strongly about whatever she feels strongly about, which we just don't know what it is. But it felt like I, you're a great guy, and I need an excuse to let you down relatively easy because Zach, 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 Zach. Zach, 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 Zach. Yeah, I, I guess. And and he didn't seem surprised to me when he exited. Maybe he's just being stoic. I don't know. Well, I felt actually, and it was a little bit like a JV version of Claire and Dale, 
where the goodbyes in this one did not seem as hard or as trying as like when she said goodbye to Riley or like a couple weeks ago, that sort of cluster of ending relationships seemed like it hit her much harder. And I feel like she had just gotten into the zone where she was like, yeah, Zach, 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 Zach. Yeah, totally. I think she picked Zach probably like a week ago. Or like, yeah, that whatever it was. I yeah. also felt like not that not to do this trope about like girls and fathers, but it did make it Zach. Her vibe with Zach made more sense to me after meeting Tasha's father, because he is likewise very like hard on his sleeve, straight shooter, going to tell you what I think, what I feel like all the time. Tasha's family seemed really lovely. Like just I really, really like them. People. I know. Me too. I made me like Tasha even more. I was just like, oh, this is a good, lovely family. Um, I just thought her mom seemed like so, so sweet. And her dad just seemed like, I don't know. They just seemed like great people. I really enjoyed them. Also, I like that they're, I like their family vibe. It just felt very familiar and like just like a really nice group. No, they seemed like they seemed they were asking the right questions. They were serious, but they also just seemed sort of like down to do whatever, have a good time, meet people and be like, OK, we're doing this yeah. now. Although Tasha's dad did say one of my least favorite sentences in the English language, which is I don't want you making the biggest mistake of your life, which is just something <laughs> that has never helped a person in ever. any instance ever, ever. All right. Let's just talk about the family situation stuff. So Ben's fa- Ben and Zach meet the family. Ben allegedly goes first. It's hard to say. Um, I think he did, though, based on clothing. The clothing was such a tell this episode. Obviously, the denim dress that will live on in infamy. Um, but she... <laughs> so Ben comes out, in. Brittany. The, the, main, the main thing is that Ben went to West Point and they had like some funny like Army versus Navy jokes. And like that was kind of it. I went back and I was like, what else... Did- Ben talked to the family about, but like, that was it. That was kind of all we got. Well, he and Tasha is guilty of this at some times, but he's so platitudinous. Like, yeah, he said, I love the way she makes me feel, uh, you know, she lights up a room. So it's, there just wasn't really all that much going on in those conversations. Um, cause her dad would kind of press him and then he would be like, no, I just, I love her. And you've, we got nothing. Although they didn't I will talk say, practicalities at all. There was nothing approaching the marriage word at all. I, I just feel like I know so little about what a life that they would have together would look like. I will say one thing to Ben's credit. I might have an entirely different opinion of him if he'd just worn Henley's instead <laughs> of weird scoop neck t-shirts all season. Like they did manage to get in one, a gratuitous like shirtless shower scene before we said goodbye to, to dear Ben, but then also just a Henley is all always a good idea. But for Ben in particular, I was like, why did we not do this? Henley is a, a very attractive look for a man nearly all the time. Um, very hard to think of a man who doesn't look good in a Henley, but, right. any, but anyway, um, I thought the shower scene was notable. That made me worried that he really is in contention for being the bachelor. Again, it's far off, but like that was some, I was like, we haven't seen this in a while. I was like, this is straight out of Colton season. We haven't, cause Peter didn't really do that. And, um, I didn't like it. I just, I was just like, okay, but then they show Matt in the shower and I was like, okay. So yeah. it de- depends on the guy. <laughs> yeah. I think Ben just has a really good body. So they felt like, yes. you know, use it or leave yeah, it. Show it off. Showed off. Although, you know, he also, whatever, Ben's complicated. I don't want to keep talking about Ben because I'm too mean about him. And I really do wish him the best and like hope that he's well and and happy. Yeah. Well, also, Ben is a lot of people's type. He does not yes. happen to be mine. He maybe does not happen to be yours either. But like one of the way that I would describe how he is not my type is like he's too much like a Ken doll. And yeah, I agree. With you. That's a formula that works for a lot of people. So, Ben, I wish you the best and I think you'll be OK. <laughs> Um, then Zach met her family and Zach did something that I really, really liked. So in his time with his, with the mom, baby had the kind of classic, has she said she loves you? Did you say it back? Blah, blah, blah. And then he talks to the dad and I was worried he was going to do the classic asking for the blessing, asking for the hand in marriage, et cetera, et cetera. And he did not do that. At least not that we saw if they edited it out. Thank you. But he was just like, 
I know that in the very near future, there could be a chance for me to propose to your daughter. And I know what that means. I, and he expressed how much he was able to fully grasp the concept. And at that point, I just applauded Zach. And I was like, thank you for having this like real conversation without asking for the blessing. Cause I hate that. Yep. And he, he didn't, I mean, maybe he did and we just didn't see that part, but like he didn't tell his whole life story, but he mentioned some real things about why his previous marriage didn't work out. Like that was a real conversation. I was so on edge for that whole thing though, because they played some just like vamp intro music before (laughs) Zach came in to meet the family that sounded like the intro to, um, chasing cars by snow patrol. (laughs) And the Grey's Anatomy buff in me is so conditioned to be like, oh, tragedy's coming. Someone's going to die. Did I know that about you? Sorry, hold the phone. Did I know that about you? I don't know. Probably maybe not. Did you know that my happiest moment of 2020 was when Patrick Dempsey returned to the Grey's Anatomy screen? Okay. Okay. (laughs) So this is probably an off-air conversation, but my roommate just recently started watching Grey's for the first time, which means that I get to watch someone watch season oh, one of Grey's God. Anatomy for the first season time. Season two and is when it gets really good too. Yeah. I, and I also think she's on like season five at this point. I don't know what I'm talking about, but it is, no, it, it's, it's so, very, very important to me. But when same. I hear that song, I think someone's going to die. Yeah, like, of course. It's just, so I was really freaked out, but then it worked out. So um, on the Airstream, I was like, I get it. McDreamy had one, but that doesn't mean that Ivan has to. I was just like, fuck this. It, yeah. It also like it was in in a remote wooded area, an airstream at a hotel. Like the idea of camping is sort of cool because you're like, oh, we'll make do. We'll do. We I'm need to a do. multi-million like, air, super successful neurosurgeon who happens to be living in this open field in Seattle. And ha ha ha. I live in an airstream versus look at this beautiful resort. And by the way, that's fictional. But look at this beautiful resort where there are so many empty hotel suites that I could be using for this date. But no, we are going to for some reason, punish Ivan and make him have his overnight date in an Airstream. It doesn't make any fucking sense. I'll never get No, I was full Addison Shepard with the Airstream. Just like, no, thank you. (laughs) Oh, Nora, I didn't know you were a kindred grace spirit. This is for a different time. Let's get back to Tasha's family. So Zach just handled them really well. They seem to like her. And then let's just cut to the chase. Tasha is wearing a really cute denim dress that she just crushes. She rocked it. And um, it's like, I really noticed like how great her outfit was. And so it was distracting to me. And so her dad comes in. It was like her third visitor of the week. Cause she had a previous episode had Jojo and Rachel and her dad gives a speech or like a, a soliloquy, a monologue. If this is Shakespeare, it's sort of like the end of the play where he's sort of just comes in with, a speech about love that you didn't understand in English school, English class in high school. And you don't understand now from Tasha's father. And I was really confused. What did you make of this interaction with her father? So it didn't make a ton of sense to me either, except that the gist was you've been married before. I don't want to see you in pain like that again. And then he said the classic, I don't want you making the biggest mistake of your life, which again, does nothing but stress a person out. Like <laughs> stress a bitch out. Yeah, that's true. I don't mean to be like, I don't, I, I'm sure that would be horrible for her to go through something like that again. But like, if she genuinely felt that this was the right choice and she is in love with Zach and she takes that plunge and it doesn't work out for them, like she will not necessarily regret having tried. I just, I don't, understand that framing. And it's something that like, I feel like parents say on this show a lot. And it always bugs me because it, it, you don't know if you're making the biggest mistake of your life until you've done it. And until the consequences hit. So it's just unhelpful to say. Yeah. And until you live a little bit more life. I mean, Tasha's only 30. She has plenty of time to make tons of huge mistakes. Um, there was a couple of crucial Franken bites in there where he clearly said something and he did a pickup. And the pickup was you, the camera moves to Tasha's face instead of her father. And it says, we're, th- I've been thinking about our family time with Ben and Zach. And he was like, I like Zach and Ben's a good guy, 
but I don't want you to make the big mistake of your life. And I think that this conversation was um, some sort of intervention, essentially, because due to this dress, we know that though it wasn't shown in this order on TV, because after this, after this conversation with her father, she then has this date with Zach where she's very forlorn more on that in a minute. And then after the forlorn date with Zach, she, we see her again. So allegedly the next day in the same exact cute denim dress breaking up with Ben. So my assumption is what is his, the father went to say, don't pick Ben. And if you're going to pick Zach, be very sure. And that like shook her into like realizing that she shouldn't even like go through it with Ben and she goes and breaks up with him right away. And then the the episode turns into a lot of filler and like a lot of fat because there's not a lot of tension because she has dumped Ben and uh, poor Ben. Hope he's okay. As we've said before, but I, I, I think that's what happened. That would make a lot of sense. And then, and if that is the case, the denim dress while cute, it's, it's a real telltale. Yeah, it's a total tell. I mean, there's that absolutely happened the same day, exact same outfit, same styling, this is the, this is TV. They're not repeating an outfit. And you, Lizzie right. McGuire, are an outfit repeater. They would never do that. Great movie. You, Julia uh, Lemon, are an outfit remember. And in this case, it's actually very <laughs> helpful from a repertorial perspective. Yeah. So I think I think her dad talked her into breaking up with Ben. That's where I'm at. Well, and her dad, even after the even after the dates themselves, or when the family met Ben and the family met Zach, after Ben, he said something like. Ben's a good, seems like a good guy. He's got some real good qualities to him or something. But then after Zach, he just straight up said, I like Zach. Yeah. Yes. Everyone likes Zach more than Ben, including Taysha and her family. So sad. Ben will be a paradise all-star. Hopefully not bachelor, but we can't rule it out. You know, I I wish him the best. He's seems like um, he's got a, a nice little, nice life in, in Venice beach, lifting weights and wearing vans. Many people, Mallory and I were discussing this. Many people have since pointed out that flat soled shoes are best for weightlifting. And that's why, um, uh, Ben is often photographed wearing vans a lot while at his gym. So just wanted to note that not that I particularly oh. care. This episode is brought to you by eBay authenticity guarantee eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says authenticity guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay authenticity guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Well, I'm (laughs) happy for Ben and his arches. Uh, (laughs) Me too. Be safe, Ben. Um, And then she has this date with Zach that is like a ballroom dancing date. Uh, On the topic of clothes... I loved her outfit. She was wearing this like black ballroom dancing dress. It was sleeveless, but it had a turtleneck. She looked phenomenal. Yes. She just looked yes. fantastic. With the really, really small pleats in the skirt, mm-hmm. but then it was like pretty high neck. That's a style, like a pretty tight, but also pretty high neck dress is something that I I like a lot. And definitely. Tasha looks good in everything, but that was, that She's was a good one She's hands down the most stunning bachelorette ever and the best clothes. I mean, wore clothes really well. I wonder if they did a big switch. They must have for her versus Claire, but like they did a great job. She looks, she had another outfit during this one that was all white and was like Mm. just shorts and a shirt, but she just looked so she's yeah, no, she just, she looks great and everything. Like she's just stunning. I don't know. Is it inappropriate for me to say that Tasha has incredible boobs. Well, I I was just going to say my only issue is she picked all of these dresses that really showcased her boobs, which looked amazing. 
But they also like in the heat and without at, like any kind of like boob support, no built in bra, no nothing like sewed in. I was really <laughs> uncomfortable. And a couple of times I was just like, okay, they've never styled a woman with large breasts before because they should sew something into these dresses. Like they do a lot of bridal gowns. Like there was that one right. pink, like silk looking dress. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. Or just like made her look a little bit. She's not big by any stretch of the imagination, but it made her look a little big because she had like kind of like a single boob because she wasn't wearing a bra, which is less like sure. fine, fine. Right. You know, she looked great, but I'm just like so some boning into these dresses. Let's get some underwire in there. Like it's not that or hard. Like, even like I'm again, she looks good and everything. I don't typically love a cutout situation. Me neither. And so she was wearing one um, when she broke up at, for the rose ceremony when she broke up with Ivan. And mm-hmm. by the way, he was that black he, dress. Yeah, that had a cutout where I was like, OK, you still look good. Wouldn't be my choice. Also, I'm worried that if you like lean forward or something, <laughs> we might all of a sudden be having a situation. But again, Tasha, a just very, stunning. very beautiful woman. Absolutely um, stunning. It's sort of like one of the top lines of the season. Beautiful women, beautiful woman finds husband. That's the headline. <laughs> That's the headline of the show. It's kind of true. I mean, <laughs> it is. I mean, I guess it applies to a lot of seasons. I don't know why she was so forlorn on this date with Zach. Like, was she upset about sending Ben home? Is she worried that Zach it's not going to work out? Like, what What was your take on that? Well, it was sort of like, um, it was the opposite of the uh, choosing engagement rings date with Brendan. Brendo. Um <laughs> Brendo, excuse I, me. I will I will call him Brendo always and forever. I hope he doesn't mind. <laughs> um but like where Brendo was so clearly uncomfortable, all of a sudden it was just strange to me that she seemed um a little thrown by oh we're we're learning a wedding dance when she'd been so 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 like gung ho about oh we're picking out engagement bands. Yeah, I know. She must have known Brandon was leaving. I I think that she, I think the last couple of days, last week probably played out in a way where she just like knew what the the ending was going to be. It's like all foregone conclusion. So she's kind of like went along with it. I mean, it did give Zach the opportunity to like say he would support her at all, at at all times. And it's okay if she decides in five years, she wants to be a stay at home mom. I thought that was very sweet. I mean, when you're in this pressure cooker and you don't really get to like see friends, you barely get to see your family. And like, all you have is these producers to talk to your talk out your feelings. Zach's like emphatic affirmations and declarations of love just must be like so comforting. And you're like, okay, we can do this because he just is so, um, forthright. And the way that he talked about his sobriety by the way, having his nine year sobriety on TV, I felt like that was underplayed. Like they should have like th- literally thrown him a party. Um, like a but like the way he, yeah, I mean, that's amazing and good for him. The way that he like talked about that and sort of like use it as like an explanation of like who he is was so meaningful and powerful. It's like, yeah, of course that, that consoled her and comforted her. Yeah, that was really, that actually kind of was now that I'm rethinking it, that was probably the moment that. I was not fully won over on Zach <laughs> just because again, like Ivan, 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 but I, I got it yeah. in that moment. I don't know if this is going to be an insane comparison, but <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> there's, there was an article I read and I don't remember where, except that I know in my soul that it was the cut where the theory was that Pete Davidson always ends up with these like incredibly desirable women that he seems like a bit of an odd pair with because he's just like very willing to do boyfriendy things and kind of embrace that role. Sure. And I got a little bit of that from Zach when, especially when they were dancing, he just all of a sudden seemed like the guy that is a fantasy for a lot of women who's like, sitting at the table at the wedding and is like, let's go dance. Like, let's be the first (laughs) on the dance floor. Like, let's go, let's do it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, that's fun. Like that isn't, that's a thing that a lot of people want. And that's a thing that a lot of people like (laughs) don't see in partners that haven't worked out. So the enthusiasm to like, be a partner, be a boyfriend, be a fiance, be a husband, not just literally, but like to sort of embrace all the tropes that come with that role in a lot of people's heads. Like I get that from Zach. 
it's a, it's a really good point. Like they're like able to act out this fantasy together. And I'm skeptical about how it's going to go in real life, though. I wish them the best. But like that just raises for me, like, what do they have in common? Like, what do they share other than having been divorced, which is not insignificant, but also doesn't necessarily like make a second relationship. And I'm just like, I just don't know. Like, I don't know what she shares actually with really any of these guys, but I, I just like don't know what the foundation of their relationship is. I, I have no idea either, which is why like Ivan, it made so much sense. Yeah. I need to stop going back to this. I will in a second, but like, it's, it, it seemed so like they're closer in age. Not that that's everything or really anything significant, but it just, they seemed like two people that would meet each other at a bar or whatever and be like, Oh, you're someone that I could date. Also, and I don't know that she would pick Zach out of a crowd or it's harder for me to figure out how that would happen. But I think it's also fair to admit that like Ivan is closer in attractiveness to Tasha than Zach is, which is like part of this too. Yeah. It's actually tall too, which she said, like, that's always, I think a sign when a girl is like, he's so tall. Like that's such a proxy <laughs> for just like, I, I love everything about you. <laughs> You're so tall. It's that's definitely true. It's a, it's a great point. Um, I just was like very confused about why she was so upset. I mean, I guess it was just based on her previous marriage, which like, obviously we don't have much visibility into. And I certainly won't be listening to her ex-husband on any podcasts, but like, I just think that I didn't really get it, but I don't know. And then, and then they just seemed really happy in the proposal. I have to say like the really happy proposals are so cringe. There's nothing worse than watching those two, like whisper to each other with the mics and just being like, we did it. We chose each other tomorrow I choose you like it was it was so horrible like I'm sorry I subjected you to it and again I'm really happy that they're happy but just watching them I like I'm doing a a, my hand in my my face in my hands because I can't even bear to think about it it's incredibly cringy I also Neil Lane has naked pictures of Chris Harrison or something (laughs) like that man has been on my television so much way too much and there's got to be a reason for it. Like there's, there's, he's got compromat. I'm I mean, sure of it. Also, I don't like the Chris Harrison. I mean, I don't like the Neil Lane rings. I've never seen one from Neil Lane that I'm like, yeah, I want that. I also, this is something that I didn't realize I cared about until I watched this episode. But if someone <laughs> should propose to me, I might care should more Ivan about propose the, to you. Should Ivan propose to me, I might care more about it coming in a velvet box mm. than I care about the ring itself. That ring was in a leather case. Yes, and it, it was. disturbed me <laughs> far beyond anything rational. <laughs> oh my God. Like I've never been, I if I, any sort of like imagining my wedding that I've ever done is like always imagining the party part of it. Like <laughs> I, it's always about my friends. Like that's funny. I always imagine the speeches. I'm just like, who would speak? What are they going to say? What's the time limit? Like all this stuff. Carry on. Well, so there's just a lot of gaps that I've very rarely like fantasized about how I would want filled in. But the second I saw him in the back of the car, like check the ring in a just matte black leather box. I was like, oh, I just learned something that I absolutely hate. <laughs> Won't be allowed for your few future nuptials. Good to know. Good to know. It was just like very anticlimactic. I was like, okay, and now we're done and we're still at the La Quinta. The cat, the taxi thing was kind of cute. Um, I think also there's no after the final rose. So like, what are they up to? Like, I, it'll probably, you know, they'll do press. I'm sure like we'll catch them on GMA tomorrow morning or whatever. But like, I'd love to know like, what has the last four months been like for Zach and Tasha? Where are they living? Like, are they still like having bagel fights, like what, what's going on with them? I want to know. There seemed to be at least a slight implication that they were going to New York just based on the, the taxi and his ties. Although I guess they did have the, um, the daydream of California when they had their fantasy suite date. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess I just assumed when they got in the cab <laughs> that <laughs> it was implied they were going to NYC, Off but to New York. yes, I would also love to see. And I would love to know if Tasia has updated her bagel preferences. 
And like, can we get an update on Ivan and Brendo? Like, what the fuck? I just want to know what everyone's up to. This is like at the end of a reality show season. This is one of my absolute biggest pet peeves. When they don't give you an epilogue on what everyone's been up to since. Like, even if it's like two sentences, like just show me a slideshow of like, and Ivan went back to Dallas and has was excited that the Queen's Gambit was so popular because he got he's really good at chess or like just whatever. Give me something. I just want like two sentences to know how everyone's doing. And I feel deprived. I need to know. Like, I, I'm like, how do I get these guys on Instagram live tonight just to do like a, a carousel of, of life updates? I would actually love if they did that. Like the the scroll at the end of a based on a true story movie yes, of just exactly. Give me an epilogue. Do you, I've, never, I've never read any Harry Potter books, but when the last one came out, I wanted to know if Harry died or not. So I went to the bookstore and I read the first page of the last, the first page of the epilogue of the last book. And then I learned he lived. And like, that's just kind of like what I, I want. I just want an epilogue. I read, <laughs> I was never a Harry Potter person either, but I read every book out of spite because I didn't want anyone to be able to say, you don't like them because you've never read them. Well, I have no problem discussing this, but I, I just know that Harry ends up with Ginny Weasley, sister of Ron, because that's in the first page of the epilogue. That's all I need. Just a little bit, just some context, just to know how everyone's sailing off into the sun. Also, I just feel like more than ever, I'm so curious about like re-entry after this. Like, what was that like for everyone? Who did they text first? What's the number one thing they wanted to know what happened? Like, what was it like going into the bubble right after the sort of the peak of the protests about the killing of George Floyd and black lives matter. Like what was it like missing three to six weeks about the election? Like there's so much to cover with these guys about their year since, since being in there. And I feel like it's the weirdest time to not have an after the final rose. It is actually, I, I hope very much that we get someone in some interview format. I don't care what it is just kind of giving us a TikTok yeah. of when did this happen? What was going on? Like, I just want, I want, I want to see two timelines, one of what was happening in the real world and two, what was happening in their quarantine or show process or whatever, because I would like to be able to match those up. That Me would too. actually be fascinating. Like the, in some ways they're like people who went into a coma. Yeah, 100%. Like you could have, you know, like, imagine if the bubble is a little bit later. And actually, this might have happened with um, M- Matt's season. Because it's actually even crazier. Matt's season started filming mid to late September and ended at Thanksgiving. So, like, the the president had COVID, almost died, survived, lost the election, didn't acknowledge it, and, like, was fighting the election results over the course of them filming The Bachelor. And so, like, if you're, like, a woman who cares about the world in any way and you go into the bubble and you come out and you're like... You find out that there's the first female black Indian American vice president and that the president had COVID and, and like wanted to wear a Superman shirt. Like that's crazy. Like I, I, I actually like hope they captured a lot of the footage, especially of Matt season of like what it was like coming out of the bubble. Cause there's like a lot to parse. Would you want to control how you learned all that information once you came out? Would you want to, would you like have a best friend be like, okay, as soon as I'm in position to get on FaceTime, like you tell me what's up or would you be as soon as you possibly could like straight to Google? What I would the be so happened? overwhelmed. I think I would have to have picked one friend. This is a great conversation. I would have had to have picked one friend to like, and it would probably be Chris Ryan, if I'm being honest, who would like do a, a, a log of events that I needed to know about when I got out. This is sort of like being on Lost. It's kind of like going to the island and, and like needing to designate your constant like the person who will like bring you back yep. and tell you everything yep. you missed. And I would just want one person to like hand me a dossier of like headlines from the day and like important tweets. Alternatively, the other thing you could do was just read Maggie Haberman's Twitter to like see what's been happening for the last 45 days, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I would want like one friend to break it down for me. Cause it's sort of like, you just miss so much. You don't know how to, it's like a vacation and you're off Twitter. You're like, well, I miss all these memes. I'm just going to move on. Right. Right. What no, would you it's do? like an editor. No, I would want that too. I would want, I would want my friend Sammy to tell me what happened, <laughs> but I don't think that I would want to, because I would want to know, I would want someone who could synthesize like how people responded, what was the biggest deal. And I would also want someone who was going to like say what was funniest about everything. Yeah. 
and it's like, I, you know, when I first interviewed Natasha Parker over the summer, that was something she and I talked about. Like, what was the first thing you did on your phone afterwards? Um, when she was on Peter's season before COVID and everything, but it is like so fascinating, like going into this bubble in such extraordinary circumstances, you don't come out, like you don't leave a reality show, the same person. You certainly aren't coming back into the same world. It's like the funny thing about this time is everything is so still, but yet everything is like so chaotic. So it's a real, it's a real mind fuck. I don't even know how we got here. I'm, I'm actually sort of stunned putting myself mentally in the position of not knowing not knowing who the president is. That's so weird. That's like what they ask you to figure out if you're concussed. I know. I know. I, I, I'm going to, we'll have to um, investigate how they handle the election during Matt's season. I'm, I'm really curious. It's interesting to talk to Rachel and Nick about it. We did an election special back on um, election day on November 3rd. You can listen to it on this very feed. It was cool to hear about. So I'm going to have to find out. Yeah. Um, Nora, any final thoughts on Clacia's season or Zach or any of these guys? Let us know how it goes when you DM Ivan. Um. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> you podcast. have to now. You said it on a podcast. podcast. Might cause some trouble for me. Um. Mainly, I found it kind of nice to be in the same place for the entire time, and that's not oh. to say that I that I want to do away with. We're in Argentina. We're in Switzerland. We're in Cleveland. <laughs> but Cleveland. It, it was oddly grounding to just have a home base. And I didn't feel like we missed out on a ton. Okay. Okay. I, I miss the travel, but um, I'm just happy for, for Tasha, and I'm happy they finally showed people sweating. I was waiting for it. So thanks for coming, coming on strong. Um, thanks to all of you for listening. I'll be back Monday next week. We got Rob Mills. We're finally back on schedule, people. Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday. And then the following Monday on January 4th, the beginning of Matt James season, Immediately after the East Coast airing, we will be doing a live pod on social. So please watch that. It'll be me, Rachel Lindsay, and Van Lathan, my colleagues from Higher Learning. Nora, thank you so much. And uh, check out Nora on the Ringer NFL show. It's it's basically the playoffs. We're almost there. So it's a great time to invest in football if you haven't already. And have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe.